When we step onto the path of self-enforced evolution and our consciousness rapidly expands, we have no choice but to ask ourselves, are we more than our physical body? Or are we just the personality? Are we our highest self, the soul? Are we the monad, pure spirit, the spark of divinity? Do we live and move and have our being within a greater one? If you are wondering about any of this, then my fellow student, this presentation is for you. Chapter 1 Introduction The scope of this video Having the right motive Having the right tools Equip and know yourself be free to do the work, and personality integration. Introduction. In my previous videos, I tried to create a framework by which the student of the ancient wisdom may approach more systematically this vast subject of life, human, solar, and cosmic. This was prompted by my struggles since the age of nine to understand the purpose of my life. Back then, when very young, I saw no purpose in school, growing up, marriage, having kids, working, growing old, getting sick and finally dying. Why then live at all? I challenged my frustrated father about this and as an answer received a hard slap in the face. Obviously, he was frustrated himself. Those years in Germany right after World War II were very difficult for most of us. To me, they also presented much unrest, and to my thirsty mind, a spiritual desert. Years went by, and at 18, I moved to the United States. Much time and energy were wasted by reading rubbish, belonging to groups, many seances, and listening to too many so-called experts, mediums, and gurus. Finally, about 50 years ago, I met my teacher, Dr. Douglas M. Baker in Honolulu, and it was he who pointed me into the right direction. From then on, my struggles became more mental as I began to earnestly study the classic writings, meditate, and help other students. The challenge each earnest student on the path faces is that of self-identity. To address this voyage from self-identity as the physical body to that of the soul and monad, the struggles and signposts along the way is the purpose of this video. Hopefully, my own experiences and that of our teachers will make your journey home an easier one. Blessings, my fellow students. May there be light in your minds and love in your hearts. Dedicated to the few that are many, the few in each location, but the many on the planet. The scope of this video. Again, this video is for those who are ready and willing to tread the path of self-enforced evolution. It is for those who are well on their way to an integrated personality and have the earnest desire to do the soul's bidding. Thy will be done. Not my little will. In this video, I will try to avoid the subject of initiation. There's plenty written about that subject, and those on the path do not reveal their standing. In a group environment, this would only create division. Remember, the path is the goal, not the initiations. 
That is why I shall use the word student in place of initiate or disciple whenever I can. Deeply absorb this truth. An initiation is not a certificate or medal you carry around. It is an expansion of consciousness that you brought about via your comprehension of the wisdom and being able to express a certain amount of soul qualities. So, what are you? The reason for people's ignorance about themselves is not the lack of knowledge, but false knowledge. With this video, I will attempt to explain what and who you really are, and the only worthwhile path forward. Only then will you be able to face the sacrifices and begin to tread the path that leads you towards the soul and beyond. The subject of group souls is not part of this video since it occurred before individualization. Lastly, each student's experience, trials and tribulations are different. They are very subjective, personal, and at best can only be described by the individual him or herself. Hence, as limited as this may be, I am only able to convey my own experiences, hopefully without making this a story about myself. We are spirit having a human experience. Having the right motive. If you yearn for something more fulfilling, something lasting, and want to help humanity, then, my brother and sister, this is for you. Then, and only then, when the yet small voice within you awakens this divine unrest, are you ready to tread the path. But if you seek attainment for the glorification of yourself, psychic development, or expect quick results, it would be better if you drop out and wait until such time as your motives become rightly oriented. The readiness to initiate the journey cannot be forced, nor can people be faulted if it has not occurred in them as yet. The level of consciousness has to have advanced to the stage where such an intention would be meaningful and attractive. David R. Hawkins Oh yes, and test your motives by downloading this free spiritual values image form from my website douglasbaker.org and do this about every six months. See how your values change. They the teachers all reiterated that the path should become a way of life, that hard work was always part of the path, that man should not attempt that way unless they were prepared to make great sacrifices, to lead the meditative way of life, and to study the occult classics in depth. Drink deep, or taste not the Perian spring. A little knowledge is a dangerous thing. The Psychology of Discipleship, Douglas M. Baker, page 126. Having the right tools. Here I will not explain terms used and the work that readies you for the path. This I have done in my previous videos. The first series was Introduction to the Ancient Wisdom series in three parts. Part 1, Journey into Consciousness. Part 2, Seven Pillars of the Ancient Wisdom and the Human Spiritual Kingdom. And Part 3, Personality Integration and Introduction to Meditation. That was followed by The Process of Dying and Our Journey Beyond. You can find these and about 75 other videos by my teacher free 
to watch on my website, douglasbaker.org. Just click on the Ancient Wisdom videos. Let me explain the very basic requirements to step onto the path. The student must equip and know himself. He must be free to do the work. He must be malleable and work on integrating the personality. Equip and know yourself. The hierarchy, the masters and your higher self cannot work with you unless you prepare yourself and have something to offer. I assure you, every step you take along the lighted path will be met with ten of theirs. Have a professional esoteric astrology chart prepared, showing the soul's purpose and properly interpret it. Get an esoteric ray reading, giving you the major energies and qualities your soul, your personality, your physical, emotional and mental bodies respond to. These two essential tools, coupled with your own experiences and intuition, will give you your purpose and line of least resistance to move forward and help humanity. This you can get done by a group of advanced students at skydanceastrology.com. Also see the link and more details on my website. Study and contemplate the wisdom classics in order of readability, Douglas M. Baker, C. W. Leadbeater, The Two Disciples, who wrote The Rainbow Bridge, Part 1 and 2, Lucille Cedarkrantz, Annie Besant, Alice A. Bailey, and H. P. Blavatsky. Begin to meditate and keep up your spiritual diary. Be free to do the work. The primary hindrance to undertake spiritual work is that we are caught up in the material necessities of the civilization we have built. It is our economy of time, energy, attention and money. What do you have to offer or sacrifice? Create a routine. Establish a time each day to do the previous described tasks. If you are retired or work from home, so much the better. Retired in school or still working? See if you can find a local group or organization like the Theosophical Society, the Arcane School, founded by the Lucius Trust, Wisdom Impressions by Lucille Cedarkrantz and SoulOne.org. They all offer workshops and online training. I give you the links in the references used on my website, part number 6062. The three things you must be ready to do to whatever extent you can. Study the classics, meditate, and serve humanity. How can you serve? Volunteering within a group is a good way. Cutting your old neighbor's grass or shoveling snow from his driveway. But without looking for a reward. It is said, those also serve who merely pay their dues. Personality Integration Let us review what we all should know. Its target, the rounding out of the personality, its integration and its dedication to the inner self as an instrument of service to mankind. From The Psychology of Discipleship, page 147, Douglas M. Baker the student's lower self fights any change towards more elevated transformation. Strong resistance is put up by the physical, emotional, and mental elementals 
as well as the crystallized emotional matter and thought forms surrounding most people. Here's an example of what many, many people look like today. Malleability is an absolute requirement to facilitate personality integration. Do not become too proud of what you know, for it will change tomorrow. Start to overcome glamour, illusion and maya. Clear your vehicles of consciousness via the Rainbow Bridge Method 1 and 2. Meditate and bring soul fire into the personality. Develop courage, patience, tolerance and humility. Learn from your mistakes and, when helping, do only what you can do well. Stress is an absolute necessity to spiritual growth, followed by a period of smoothened life so as to allow incorporation and rounding out. Psychosynthesis Psychology of Discipleship Douglas M. Baker Chapter 2 As Above, So Below Some Basics About Thought Forms our work as builders. The personality. The young student's conundrum. Other discouraging factors. Attacks by the dark brotherhood. Cleaning up the mess. The student's rays. As above so below. First, you must believe that we are from and always remain part of a great being expressing itself via this universe. Everything lives and moves and has its being within a greater one. To begin to understand the personality, the soul and the monad, we have to review what thought forms are. Please understand that this review is very rudimentary. We will explore the subject from the angle of the personality. In parts 1 and 3 of the Introduction to the Ancient Wisdom videos, I explained in much detail the generation, qualities, and purpose of thought forms. Some Basics About Thought Forms for our purpose here, you only need to know that when you created a thought form and send it out, you imbued that form with part of your consciousness. You ensouled that form of Davic or elemental lives, and it will remain coherent and fulfill its purpose as long as you focus on it and continue to provide energy to it. Remember, energy follows thought. Normally, it will dissipate slowly via attrition after you disconnect from it. Luckily for us, only a very small number of people can actually form powerful and clear enough thought forms to manifest them in the physical. In fact, to a clairvoyant, it looks more like most of us are just vomiting over each other. Our work as builders we are creators, regardless how haphazard and bumbling we go about building these forms. Here's what the Master tells us. In his work as thought builder, man has to show forth the characteristics of the Logos, the great architect or builder of the universe. He has to parallel his work as the one who conceives the idea the one who clothes the idea in matter, the one who energizes the idea and thus enables the form to preserve its outline and perform its mission, the one who, in time and space, through desire and love, directs that thought form, vitalizes it continuously, 
until the objective is attained. The one who, when the desired end has been accomplished, destroys or disintegrates the thought form by withdrawing his energy. Occultly, the attention is withdrawn or the eye is no longer upon it. So that the lesser lives which have been built into the desired form fall away and return to the general reservoir of Deva substance. Thus, in all creative work in mental matter, man is likewise to be seen as a trinity at work. He is the creator, preserver, and destroyer. A Treatise on Cosmic Fire, Alice A. Bailey, page 957. Oh yes, you should also know that these thought forms can appear to have their own character and consciousness. In fact, it is a faint reflection of its creator, part of his consciousness and qualities. Now you might get an idea where this is leading you. As above, so below, and hence, as below, so above. Now let us review what the personality really is. A personality, the soul's capacity of detached self-awareness. The soul uses the personality as a means for contacting the lower planes of the mental, astral and physical worlds. The soul creates a space in time to manifest its three lower vehicles via its permanent atoms, which are vortexes of energy, on the lower mental, emotional and physical planes. The quality of these vehicles is determined by the permanent atoms, and I have more in chapter 4 about this. The soul's guidance of the builders, the devas, and the energies the bodies respond to, the rays. By the same process mentioned previously, the soul creates a thought form and ensouls it with part of its own consciousness. That becomes the personality, a definite center of force and consciousness. You. The results reflect the soul's goals or fixed design for a given incarnation to work of karma, to grow and aid in the planetary evolution. The soul's outpost of consciousness, the personality, and its bodies are guided and kept coherent by a constant stream of seven energies. The personality is intended to be the soul's embodiment of love applied with intelligence. The self-conscious personality somewhat reminds me of the relationship between the Earth-based controllers and a Mars rover. Many rover decisions are autonomous and others are via guidance from Earth. One day in the future, the driver will be sitting on the rover and controlling it wisely. Not that we should live in this world less, but that we should learn to live in both worlds more. Douglas M. Baker There is a soul in every human form, and that soul uses the lower aspects of man simply as vehicles of expression. The objective of the evolutionary process is to enhance and deepen the control of the soul over this instrument. When this is complete, we have a divine incarnation. From Intellect to Intuition, Alice A. Bailey, page 52. A man's whole effort is to become aware of the soul and to transmute his consciousness into that of the soul while still preserving the consciousness of the personality. 
The Rays and the Initiations, page 459, Alice A. Bailey. The above information is applicable to the time when the student steps onto the lighted path and the soul begins to take interest in its lower expression. The student now begins to associate himself with the thought that he is so much more than just the calcium of his bones, his physical body. The Young Student's Conundrum Here are some hindrances and conflicts the beginner experiences. Overcoming Lama If this is not successfully worked on, nothing else will matter. See how to do this in my video, Introduction to the Ancient Wisdom, Part 3. First, he reads the easy-to-understand books, like Leadbeater, Baker, Cedarcrunz. And he believes to know a lot. Then he starts reading Alice A. Bailey, Blavatsky, and he realizes how much more he has to learn. He begins to think that he has not even scratched the surface. Then comes the real conflict of self-identity. Why do I have to endure so much pain? I must have been a real bastard in childhood or in a previous life. Why do I have to work off the soul's karma? Why am I, the personality, always the dirty end of the stick? If the soul is so perfect, why doesn't it come down here and experience this shit for itself? Who and what am I? What part do I play within the soul's existence? Why am I torn between the soul and personality? Why this duality? After much study and contemplation, the student lastly realizes that his effort have finally put him on the first rung of a ladder that disappears in the clouds. And by the time he gains a broad enough picture of the complexity of life, he might get overwhelmed and discouraged by the little part he plays within it. Some will drop out just to pick up the same task in a future incarnation. As long as the student identifies with his three lower forms, these aspects of the mental principle produce in him the great heresy of separateness, a true identity crisis. This struggle is a necessary but not a permanent stage. Much of what I say in the next chapters will hopefully explain and ease this problem. A long struggle begins and much study and time will pass before the student believes and speaks with conviction this ancient affirmation to invoke the soul's cooperation. I am the soul. I am the light divine. I am love. I am will. I am fixed design. See the Rainbow Bridge Parts 1 and 2 by the Two Disciples. Don't feel lonely about this. Here are some excerpts from my teacher's spiritual diary while he was in isolation. Monday, 11th of March, 1963. I think sometimes of a flower that is watered and fed with the best manure, planted in the most fertile soil, and then left unpruned. Or, as sometimes comes to me in my dreams, young price chicks reared carefully and then neglected to starve and run wild. The Spiritual Diary, Douglas M. Baker All of this is a certain type of spiritual loneliness through which every student must pass. Even those of us having gained the first or second initiations in past lives will have the same or similar problems. We just start sooner 
and to remember early in life. Emanuel Swedenborg told us, All learning is remembering. Other discouraging factors. Rejection by one's family or friends. Both my brother and my mother strongly believed that this knowledge was of the devil. Just before my mother's passing over, she told me never to talk about this again. This hurts when coming from somebody you love. As you expand your consciousness, your understanding of what you see and read on TV, internet, and newspapers will change. You begin to see the motivating energies and agenda underlying people's words and actions. This, when verbalized, can cause much friction between you and others. Your interests shift away from domestic news towards international and world events. That is good, but sometimes misunderstood by others. Work within a group can sometimes create tensions, competition, likes, dislikes, and distractions. Working alone like I do has its own challenges, trials I might not have overcome during the last 52 years without the support and encouragement of Jacqueline, my wonderful wife. And here is a real powerful hurdle to overcome, attacks by the dark brotherhood. The soul, the masters of light, and the dark forces know the future and what role you will play in this incarnation. Depending on the impact your work might have determines the intensity of attacks by the dark forces. By the same rule, the student on the path also comes under the protection of the hierarchy, the masters of light. Here from my spiritual diary, August 1, 1972. I was well on the path and attracted the wrath of the Dark Brothers. A very powerful attack tried to sever the life and consciousness streams between monad, soul and the personality. Physical death. My physical body was totally paralyzed, unable to breathe. Even my thought process were dramatically subdued. As the scene of my life ran past my vision towards infancy, a powerful positive force intervened at the very, very last second. Countless other psychic and physical attacks by the Dark Brothers over a period of four years. Several times, the physical attacks against me were so intense that some people, unconsciously used by the dark forces as tools, lost their physical life. Accepted disciples who battle all the above enumerated factors, plus the black forces arrayed against the elder brothers, can call upon the spiritual energies of their group and at rare and indicated moments upon the master under whom they work. Thus, the work and labor expands. Thus, the responsibility and struggle steadily increases. Yet at the same time, there is also a steadily growing reception of potencies which can be contacted and utilized and which, when correctly contacted, ensure victory at the end. A Treatise on White Magic, page 232, Alice A. Bailey I only want at this point to lay emphasis upon the fact that no danger need be feared by the average student from this source. It is only as discipleship is approached and a man stands out ahead of his fellows as an instrument of the White Brotherhood that he attracts the attention of those who seek to withstand. 
went through application to meditation and power and activity in service, a man has developed his vehicles to a point of real achievement. Then his vibrations set in motion matters of a specific kind, and he learns to work with that matter, to manipulate the fluids and to control the builders. In so doing, he encroaches on the domain of those who work with the forces of involution, and thus he may bring attack upon himself. This attack may be directed against any of his three vehicles and may be of different kind. Letters on Occult Meditation, page 132, A. A. Bailey. Read pages 130 through 133. One major problem represents itself when the student begins to sense energies and presences. Only after years will he be able to distinguish clearly between positive and negative forces and vibrations. Until then, all of it evokes fear and defensive action. I have seen too many students at this point become discouraged, scared, unbalanced and drop out. The student must learn to tread the noble middle path, balance in all areas of living. Cleaning up the mess. In part one of Introduction to the Ancient Wisdom, I described the mess we made of our outer vehicles. In part three, I gave you three tools by which you can reduce this clutter and eliminate glamour and delusion. The aspirant, also called probationary disciple, and even the accepted disciple, will make little progress on the path unless he attends to this mess. Students must be brutally honest with themselves and become immune to pride, attachments, and superficial judgments. The hardest to overcome is the illusion of self-importance. By thy light shall ye be known. From here to this, the aura of an arhat, a fourth initiate. The Student's Rays the student sooner or later must understand the science of the seven rays. A little earlier I pointed out how you can secure the ray complement the soul, your personality, mental, emotional and physical bodies respond to. This knowledge will help to understand yourself and point out your path of least resistance. Here's a sample. Here are my rays. The monad, I believe, is on the second ray of love wisdom, and most certainly the soul is. Personality was always on the first ray, but it's moving more and more towards the second ray. My mental body is on the fifth ray. My astral, emotional vehicle, is on the second ray. And the etheric physical body is responding well to the third and seventh ray. In all the incarnations revealed to me, will race predominate it? The first, third, fifth, and seventh. Enabling the personality to get things done alone. The first ray personality's forcefulness is moderated by a second ray emotional body. Both the second ray emotional and the fifth ray mental body facilitates soul contact, which is on the second ray. The fifth ray mental body enables an eye for detail and ability for repetitive, disciplined work. But what a challenge it is to silence the mind. As the personality increasingly aligns with the soul, 
the ray of the personality changes to that of the soul. I observed that in myself during the last 20 years. The beginning student's dictum must be, know thyself, and only then can you change yourself. Man is a solar system in miniature, Paracelsus told us. And if you know yourself, you will understand the universe. Chapter 3 The Struggle, the Burning Ground Do we walk alone? Recollection of past lives Nightly training in schools Testing the student The Struggle, the Burning Ground Average man is oblivious to his divine nature. He identifies himself with his physical body and no conflict exists for him. Ah, yes, the bliss of ignorance. The burning ground is not for you, not yet. Not until every call of the flesh is answered. Not until every material mesh has clung to you. But when richest in experience, experience beyond your wildest dreams, and when poorest in attachment to them, then comes the burning ground. Opening of the Third Eye, Douglas M. Baker Now the earnest student begins to cram whatever he reads into his mind. He believes, but does not know. Now the real struggle and frustration commences. Ignorance is taken from him and the way from whence he came is barred. A mind expanded can never return to its original size. The mind entails roughly intellect, self-identity, memory, and some pure intelligence. Unfortunately, the mind can only dissect, rearrange, recycle what it knows. This is why the master HPB, Helena Petrovna Blavatsky, stated, The mind is the great slayer of the real. Let the disciples slay the slayer. And here begins the student's actual struggle, the burning ground. This is not an actual place, but the task to integrate the personality to condition the bodies, and to acquire real intelligence. It is to identify with human suffering, develop a loving heart and a trained mind. Know that wisdom plus knowledge produces intelligence. Wisdom is a soul quality, but knowledge the student must supply. It is also the student's responsibility to bring into the personality the soul's qualities of booty or wisdom. Ask the soul for help via the soul mantra. Wisdom concerns the oneself, while knowledge deals with the not-self. The fire of mind or solar fire. The fire of knowledge burns up all action on the plane of illusion. Therefore, those who have acquired it and are emancipated are called fires. The Secret Doctrine, Volume 1, page 114, H. P. Blavatsky. This is aided by study of the classics, service to humanity, and meditation. By methods well described by our teachers, we must bring soul and monadic fire into the personality. See references on my website, part number 6062. For many, the flow of S, or soul fire, is registered down the spine as thrills. 
during moments of inspiration or intense and high feelings, but these are only candles on the sun of what is to come. The Spiritual Diary, Douglas M. Baker Here is one of my methods to gain detailed knowledge. I established an electronic database of all classic books on my computer. See the previous mentioned authors. My fifth ray mind and third and seventh ray physical brain demands that I know every detail and this database allows me to study one word or topic at a time across all classics. The journey to self-unfoldment is reserved for those with endurance, a deep yearning for truth and a substantially integrated personality. An essential part of the integration process involves hardship, struggle, and suffering. Karma is accelerated dramatically as we take on not just our karma, but our portion of planetary and solar karma. Spiritual staying power must be gained. Nothing else will do if the kingdom of heaven is to be taken by storm. Students with a second-ray personality have an easier path via believing. Not so with me. With my array makeup, I had to struggle virtually alone to gain some degree of insight. Oh yes, the will race, the slayers of easy understanding and believing. Here is a method to attract intuition, truth. You focus intensely with your mind on a problem, a word, or something you want to understand. Then, replay and squeeze out all you know about the subject, and when the mind becomes exhausted, relax and become receptive. Here is an example in my diary from 1976. While as a consultant designing the air traffic control communication system, commercial and military flights, for the Chinese Aviation Administration, Republic of China, I came many times to a point where the limited budget and resources did not allow me to use conventional equipment and methods. I would lie down on a sofa with a crystal on my forehead focus in the brow center and think very intensely about the problem until the mind became tired. Then I would release the problem and relax. Every time, within a few moments, I could clearly see the solution in form of schematics, construction details, or people's and contractors' names. I had gone where truth resides. Here, from my spiritual diary in response to my desire to balance the mind, May 15, 1987, Early Morning Dream. I am trying to escape from a giant snake through a clear, fast-running mountain stream. As I get close to the other side of the stream, I see the serpent come after me. I take a pickaxe and stab it. I feel the pickaxe go through the body, tearing organs and crushing rocks below its body. I am in ankle-deep, clear water. As I lift the pickaxe to strike it again, I notice that the snake has a human head, shoulders, arms, and my face. It is begging me not to kill it, and my son is grabbing my left arm. My wife and son now standing on the shore, are crying and imploring me not to kill Dieter, their husband and father. I now recognize the snake as part of me, my mind, my intellect, and I stab it again and again until only a mangled mess remains of its body. Only my personality's face remains intact. I can still recall the deep love and anguish of my wife and son as I murder all that they know me to be. 
There are many symbols and emotional content here, and you too must learn to document and interpret your visions and dreams. I will just point out one detail. I killed the snake with a pickaxe that had a very uncommon point. My teacher used this symbol for soul fire, monadic fire, samadhi, the result of one-pointed focus. And there was my answer about what tool to use to balance my mind. There are burning grounds at various stages of unfoldment. Here is one related to the lesson learned in my previous experience. When the blazing light of the monad is focused directly upon the personality via the antakarana and not specifically through the soul, it produces a blazing fire which burns up all hindrances in a steady, sequential process. The Rays and the Initiations by A. A. Bailey When he, the student, has achieved right desire and has made a true effort towards correct orientation, then, when the conflict between good and evil is at its height, there comes a moment when he demands more light, more power, more understanding and liberation to take his next forward step. When he can make this demand with firm intent and can stand steady and unafraid, response will inevitably come from the very presence itself a manifestation of light and love and power will stream forth. Recognition of need has then evoked response. The conflict ceases. The dweller departs to his own place. The path ahead lies clear. The disciple can move forward with assurance and a better life dawns for him. Glamour, A World Problem, page 295, Alice A. Bailey. Do we walk alone? Do we? It takes years, a critical mind and humility before you see patterns emerge. The law of economics govern the help the master or his more advanced initiates can give. Help and protection is directly proportional to what you can do to aid the divine plan. The masters of light and those of darkness know what role you will play eventually. Here are just a few of my recollections in this life. When about 12 months old, my three and a half year older brother lifted me onto an upper floor open window ledge, stood me upright and left me there, alone. When 18 months old, my brother placed me on a wooden plank and shoved me into a fast running wide river. I was saved by my mother just before the plank went over a dam. Fleeing from the advancing Russian front near the end of World War II with my mother and brother in a cattle train. Attacking fighter planes strafe the train, killing many around us, almost lost my mother. Thirty months old, I run into a very busy city road and got knocked over by a large truck. It runs over me, but I have only bruises. Drafted into the U.S. Army, and fighting in Vietnam, spending most of my time in the jungle. Rumor was we lost 38% of the battalion within the first three months. Spokane, Washington, ICU ward. Nurse enters the room and tells me there is a figure of brilliant white light standing next to my bed. 
Or, Seattle, Washington, again the intensive care unit, ward. Nurse enters my room and walks around my bed and suddenly asks, Who else is in the room? It felt like I bumped into several people. I could cite many other incidences of healing and protection. I was working in Taipei, Taiwan, and living in the Grand Hotel. I had not seen my wife and young son for six months and missed them very much. As I meditated in my room, a beautiful, powerful force surged through me again and again, shaking me to the core. And as I sat there on my bed, sobbing like a little child, these words were given to me telepathically. The first line was repeated three times. Verily I say unto thee, Verily I say unto thee, Verily I say unto thee, Let us be like a tree, with the roots firmly planted into the soil of our material responsibilities, and an upward-reaching trunk that supports an ever-widening, onward-growing crown, like the branches stretching out towards the light from above. And then, my brothers and sisters, when the time has come, let us burst forth into a flowering glory, and our fruits ripen and benefit those who grow in our shadow. For that, beloved ones, is our purpose. Recollection of past lives. If you speak as the soul, you can speak of your previous incarnations, but if you speak as the personality, then you can only say, I stand on the shoulder of all those personalities my soul has brought forth in previous incarnations. You are right now the best the soul could, wanted to, and was allowed to bring forth to accomplish certain goals. Stay humble. Past lives are only given by the master, soul, or a true teacher to the personality if the knowledge will help to explain and to overcome certain obstacles and shortcomings in the personality. I caution you not to pursue those who seek to inflate your personality with false pride. Ask yourself, do you really want to know? If so, then be prepared to carry around some very painful memories for the rest of this incarnation. All such revelations have karmic consequences, and when given by the Master or Soul, in those moments, you are reliving them with all the emotions, pain, guts, and glory more real than anything you can imagine. Those memories are more tangible than what you experienced an hour ago. I know. Here I will attempt to describe three methods by which I gained some knowledge of past lives. One those given to me by the master, soul, or higher initiate, needed or requested by me. 2. Information of a past life revealed by my teacher and verified by the Nirmanakaya. The purpose would be to study everything about that life in written history, to see old patterns, illnesses, and illusions repeating themselves that I want to avoid or learn from. 3. Those I attune to via reading the Akashic Records. Less reliable and you have to pay much closer attention to the emotional content. 1 and 2 are only given when the master, teacher or the soul knows that the personality is mature and sufficiently balanced to benefit from this knowledge, without causing false pride 
or delusion of grandeur. Remember, the highest hurdle to overcome on your way to personality integration is the illusion of self-importance. Here are some examples from my diary. I was not brought up to be prejudiced towards people of color, and my best friend in the army was a black man from Jamaica. But my inner emotional response when seeing a black male with a white woman brought forth emotions that I could not explain to myself. So, as the personality, I asked the master and soul for an explanation. In a vision, I was forced to relive the following. Early Renaissance, Italy or Spain. I, the soul, incarnated into a well-known family. I was a very skilled fighter, well-trained and experienced with all weapons then available. I was deeply in love with a beautiful girl, and our wedding was planned. At the altar, a challenge for the hand of my bride was made by a strong, tall, black fellow warrior, a challenge to the death. Knowing that I was better with any weapon he could choose, he elected for us to fight with bare hands. He was stronger than I was, and finally overpowered me. Instead of killing me, he broke my back over his knee. So, my love, my fiancée became his wife, but she was more a possession, a trophy to him. The worst pain I experienced while partially recovering in a wheelchair overlooking the town square was what I saw each Sunday. After church, the black warrior would parade my love past my window, she shoveling three feet behind him in golden shackles and a connecting chain around her ankles that forced her to only walk with tiny steps. Her loving sad eyes looking up at me, burning me like it was yesterday. Or, do you want to remember like I do? As a captain of a gigantic sailing vessel filled with black slaves, I eventually turned the ship around and freed all of them, with the full knowledge that death awaited me upon my return to the port of origin. I can still remember the smell of the lion's breath while it ripped my body apart. This type of punishment was reserved for those well-heeled and well-known. When asking why I was overly concerned about bears while fishing up north, standing on a desolate, cold, pebble-covered beach and seeing far away a large bear rapidly approaching, me running towards a tree to climb out of harm's way, only to be pulled down and eaten while still conscious. Or coming home from fighting the Ottoman Empire army in front of Vienna's crumbling walls and freeing Hungary on my way north, returning home not as a hero, but besieged by politicians blaming me for having lost so many men. Seriously, do you really want to carry such vivid memories with you for the rest of this incarnation? Know what you ask for. Painful, yes but each explained something within my present consciousness. It revealed patterns in this and past lives. The path is not for the faint-hearted, and the ancient Egyptian dictum still holds true. Know thyself, and only then can you change yourself. And yes, there have been some happier recollections. It is all part of earnestly walking the path of return to our Father's home. It is all part of the burning ground and facing the dwell on the threshold, you. 
a path littered with those who lack the spiritual staying power. Again, drink deep or taste not from the Paerian spring. A little knowledge is a dangerous thing. Nightly training in schools. The ancient wisdom tells in symbolic terms about the burning ground we must pass through to get from the hall of ignorance into the hall of learning, and from there into the hall of wisdom. In plain English, the average human is ignorant of any of this and lives in the hall or state of ignorance. As the probationary disciple or aspirant begins to tread the path, he moves into the hall of learning. He is being taught in the highest levels of the astral plane while his body is asleep. Advanced egos and the spiritually inclined who are not yet on the probationary path, attend instructions from disciples and on occasions large classes are conducted for their benefit by initiates. Their work is more rudimentary, though occult from a worldly standpoint, and they learn under supervision to be invisible helpers. Initiation, Human and Solar Page 65, Alice A. Bailey In the Hall of Learning, the pupil is taught nightly for a short time before proceeding with any work of service. This teaching he brings over into his physical brain consciousness in the form of a deep interest in certain subjects and in an increasing aptitude to think concretely and abstractly on the various occult matters that are occupying his attention. Treatise on White Magic, Alice A. Bailey, page 352. In the Hall of Learning, the soul strives to dominate the personality until a balance is reached. In the Hall of Wisdom, the soul dominates the personality more and more. Part of this is the blending of the paths of the mystic with that of the occultist. Here lessons are taught on the mental plane. I explained the mystic's and occultist's path in my video Introduction to the Ancient Wisdom, Part 3. Classes are held by initiates of the first and second degrees for accepted disciples and those on probation between the hours of 10 and 5 every night in all parts of the world, so that the continuity of the teaching is complete. They gather in the Hall of Learning, and the method is much the same as in the big universities. Classes at certain hours, experimental work, examinations, and a gradual moving up and onward as the tests are passed. A number of the egos on the probationary path are in the department that is analogous to the high school. Others have matriculated and are in the university itself. Graduation results when initiation is taken and the initiate passes into the Hall of Wisdom. The First Initiation This often, I might well say usually, takes place without the conscious realization of the physical brain. The Rays and the Initiations, page 585, Alice A. Bailey. Initiates receive instruction directly from the Masters or from some of the great Devas or Angels. These teachings are usually imparted at night in small classes or individually, should the occasion warrant it, in the master's private study. The above applies to initiates in incarnation or on the inner planes. If on causal levels, they receive instruction at any time deemed advisable, direct from the master to the ego on causal levels. Initiation, Human and Solar, Alice A. Bailey, page 69. 
Here is just one small excerpt from my spiritual diary on a lesson received during a time when attacks by the Dark Brotherhood were especially strong. 8.30 a.m. December 7th, 1974. This is the short form. I am lying on my back on a lap table. I lift my head and look around. In the background I see throughout the large laboratory on familiar equipment and machines. Several students are in the background observing me. Three teachers are standing on my left and are instructing me. One of them is talking me through creating an energy structure in the shape of an inverted pyramid above me, with a point touching my brow center. Now I draw the structure into me and it inverts into an upright pyramid around me. Within it, I see various components and instruments. I remember the color of the shell well. Now the instructor says, Good. Now that you have created this, from now on all you have to do is work with the white fire and the violet flame. From my spiritual diary. I remember many other classes given in the higher astral and lower mental planes. Teaching others is also a good way of learning. The preparations and sharing of the knowledge crystallize the facts learned and allow intuition from higher planes to rush in. Testing the student When one lesson has, in this way, been mastered, a further one is set, and when a pupil has learned a particular series of lessons, he graduates and passes an initiation. Treatise on White Magic, page 353, Alice A. Bailey The student is tested for the ability to distinguish right from wrong, real from the unreal, deception from truth, and negative versus positive vibrations. Some tests had time limits. Others took me through a labyrinth with several tests along the way. I passed all of those that I recall. I remember many, many tests during the first few years. Countless times when the soul and personality were tested together. So many times after passing a test, I would come back to the physical body and exclaim, Oh my, I am so glad I was not in charge, but only the observer. The explanation for this is that the personality's consciousness is so much less hampered in the higher astral and especially the mental planes. Further, who is actually tested is somewhat blurred at that higher level, because personality and soul consciousness are approaching each other. There comes the point when the student begins to think as the pearl upon the necklace of consciousness, and himself as the informing spirit, controlling and rightly using consciousness and his outer forms for good. His job now is to bridge the gap between these pearls. All consciousness in this universe is one. Here schematically I am trying to show how consciousness expands on higher planes. Notice that the physical body has little consciousness compared to our emotional body and our mental body. Humanity today is only self-conscious in the physical brain. Notice the dramatic expansion of consciousness as we reach the level of the soul and beyond. September 15th, 2008 from my spiritual diary. A test and a lesson. I was taken to a place where evil dwells. Very powerful negative vibrations threatened to overcome my defenses. The word Avicii or hell came to mind. I found myself in a place where the worst of humanity after physical death gravitate 
to find an outlet for the evil passion burning within them. There was so much evil that those in charge had established prisons within this prison for the worst of the worst. I was being observed how I protected myself here and what I could do to transmit light into this darkness. Sometimes we are sent here to assist and bring hope, so that one day even they can rejoin the way upwards towards the light. A Powerful Affirmation for Protection I am a point of light within a greater light. I am a strand of loving energy within the stream of love divine. I am a spark of sacrificial fire focused within the fiery will of God, and thus I stand. I am a way by which men may achieve. I am a source of strength enabling them to stand. I am a beam of light shining upon their way, and thus I stand. And standing thus, revolve and tread this way, the way of man, and know the ways of God, and thus I stand. Chapter 4 So, what is the soul? The soul's purpose. The soul's causal body. The soul's consciousness. The three soul approaches. Soul contact. So, what is the soul? It is also known as the ego, solar angel, higher self, egoic lotus, Christ principles, higher consciousness. I have seen about 50 different names for the soul. It is the ensouled unit of force or energy created by the monad to gain experience on all levels of vibration below the intuitional or buddhic plane. It is a vortex of force or twelve energies held together by the will of the monad. It is not spirit, but it is a vehicle of spirit, the monad. It is an outpost of the monad's consciousness and a major center of experience in the life of the monad. It is an entity which develops by experiences through its personality and lower bodies. It is often referred to symbolically as the twelve-petaled lotus, each petal or energy having a unique quality. These qualities are that of knowledge, love, and sacrifice. The innermost petals hide the jewel in the lotus, the three permanent atoms. Each soul is responding and using one of the seven rays more than another. It facilitates reincarnations throughout the long cycle of personality development. It is the principle of intelligence. It gives the personality characteristics like mind and mental awareness, which manifest as the power to analyze, to discriminate, to separate, and to distinguish, to choose, or to reject. The soul's purpose. Nothing exists for itself. The beauty, compassion, and deep knowledge of a mature soul is impossible to describe in human terms. However, I can list some of its purposes. To express the monadic qualities of will or purpose, love, wisdom, and active intelligence to the extent possible via its lower forms and personality, you. To facilitate reincarnation, 
Our physical body does not last long enough to learn all that must be absorbed. Every soul had most likely over 700 incarnations since individualization 18 or more million years ago to build faculties into its causal body, to grow and enhance the quality and radiance of the causal body and itself via the ever-increasing excellence of the personality by unfolding the petals of the lotus. Other purposes of the soul are to be the link between spirit and lowest matter, to spiritualize its personality until reincarnation is no longer required. Then, at the fourth initiation, the soul and personality merge and aim towards monadic union. Life in a physical body is for the soul a karmic necessity, which is met at regular intervals to work off its own planetary and solar karma. What purpose would a painter's masterpiece have if it is hidden in a closet without being appreciated by anyone? A quality without being expressed has no purpose. Go forth, my fellow student, express your soul qualities. The soul's causal body. The causal body, or egoic ache, is spheroidal in shape, expands with each incarnation until it becomes a sphere of pulsating light of great beauty. The causal body came about 18 million years ago, or more, at the point of individualization, the birth of a self-conscious, primitive human during Lemurian times, and for some of us, earlier yet. It is a film of mental matter that previously formed the sheath around the three lower bodies of an anthropoid-like animal before individualization. One of its functions is to separate the soul's consciousness from that of the personality at the moment of individualization. There exists a definite break in consciousness between the lower mind and the abstract mind. The task of building the Antakarana and creating that which will bridge the gap is the soul's and the student's mission. The causal body is destroyed during the fourth initiation, so that the soul-infused personality may be consciously inspired by the spiritual triad, the triple expression or instrument of the monad. Within the causal body are three atoms, the mental unit atom, and the astral and physical permanent atoms. These atoms are centers of force, imbued with the fire of substance. 1. They are the distributors of a certain type of force. 2. They are the conservers of faculty or ability to respond to a particular vibration. 3. They are the assimilators of experience and the transmuters of that experience into quality. This is the direct result of the work of the soul's ray as it plays upon the atom. 4. They hold the memory of the unit of consciousness. When fully vibrant, they are the reason for the continuity of the consciousness. A Treatise on Cosmic Fire, page 509, Alice A. Bailey.
the lower triad out of which the personality is synthesized. The soul uses the personality as a means for contacting the lower planes of the physical, astral, and lower mental plane. The soul looks upward in vibration via the Sutratma, towards its higher consciousness, spirit, the monad. It looks downward in vibration via the Antakarana towards its personality, while expressing to the extent possible its qualities. Atma, or divine will, is expressed in its personality via its physical body. Buddhi, or love wisdom, is expressed via its astral emotional body, and manas, or divine intelligence, is expressed via its mental body and the mind. The soul's consciousness. Initially it too is only a faint reflection of the consciousness and qualities of the monad. At first, Progress is very slow and for many eons thereafter. The soul is very little aware of the personality nature, its disposition and ideas. The soul can be conscious of the limitations within the personality and of the barriers opposed to the inflow of soul energy, but the details are of no interest to the soul. The soul is occupied with recognizing hierarchical planning, with registering world need, and with responding faintly, very faintly at first, to the developing monadic inflow. By far the greatest barrier for the personality and soul to meet is the lack of usefulness to express soul qualities via the personality. Ask yourself, have I equipped myself to the best I can? Discipleship in the New Age, Volume 2, page 68, Alice A. Bailey The soul is in deep meditation during many incarnations, and only when a fair measure of personality integration is achieved is the soul's attention drawn away from its own interior considerations and egoic affairs to those of its shadow, the personality. At that point, the master of the same ray becomes aware of the person. On the path of discipleship, the soul is all the time consciously aware of the striving personality. The soul is limited in expression by the nature and quality of the form in which it is found. A Treatise on White Magic, page 34 to 39, Alice A. Bailey. The soul is conscious or aware in three directions. It is self-conscious. This self-conscious aspect is brought about via incarnations as a personality and as a mental, astral and physical being. It is group conscious, aware of its ray life and works with the planetary hierarchy. It knows its part within the group soul of humanity because it shares that consciousness interests, activities, and objectives. Man's soul is en rapport with the soul of all things, the universal soul. A Treatise on the Seven Rays, page 58 to 59, Alice A. Bailey. It is Logos conscious only potentially. Only after the personality is perfected, can the soul and personality finally begin to work upwards in vibration towards the higher self, the monad, and from there even beyond. When the soul incarnated, it forfeited its free and blissful state and entombed part of itself in flesh. Esoterically we refer to this as the soul's death. 
This imposes a true limitation on the soul's group consciousness. For men begin to pass their nature's bound, and find new hopes and cares which fast supplant their proper joys and griefs. They grow too great for narrow creeds of right and wrong, which fade before the unmeasured thirst for good, while peace rises within them ever more and more. Such men are even now upon the earth, serene amid the half-formed creatures round. Paracelsus by Robert Browning The Three Soul Approaches the three major contacts with the personality. 1. At individualization, the soul appropriates a physical vehicle and a primitive human is the result. This we call the touch of appropriation. Many eons pass while a gradual adjustment, development and unfoldment occurs. The soul tightens its hold upon its instrument the lower form nature. This occurs on the physical plane. 2. The next contact occurs when the student on the path calls out in desperation to the soul, knowing it to be his spiritual divine nature. This impact is called the touch of acquiescence, and it marks for the first time the giving in by the soul to the demand of the personality for help and light. This experience marks a significant moment in the life of the soul and the personality, and the man is never again the same. He has participated in a soul activity. Treatise on the Seven Rays, page 275, Alice A. Bailey. 3. After this, and over time, the student will experience various and sequential initiations as he transits out of the fourth kingdom into the fifth, the spiritual kingdom. This we call the touch of enlightenment and is closely related to the third initiation. It takes place on the mental plane affected through the mind. Soul Contact The Soul's Acquiescence to the Plea of the Personality January 7, 1986 The Short Form A beautiful white eagle lands on my shoulder. This being of light has a very definite personality. I share its consciousness and an absolute indescribable powerful feeling of kindness, wisdom and compassion overcomes me. The fires of love and the warmth which emanate from this being into me are utterly beyond words. I understand that it knows my every thought. I realize that my aimless wandering in this thicket of human life had been the cause that kept this wonderful oneness from manifesting. I felt a profound sadness and guilt overcome me. Calmness and deep love radiated from this tremendous being, and I knew that we would never separate again. I understand my journey through so many trials and tribulations was always watched over by it, my higher self, the soul. I shall never again walk alone. I ask it questions like its gender, its name and the spelling of it, and many other queries that came to my mind. It answered each telepathically and to my fifth ray mind it was just like having a normal conversation. No symbols or images necessary. This marked a definite expansion of consciousness and during many meditations thereafter, I saw my neck, shoulders and outstretched arms covered in white feathers from my spiritual diary.
Mantram of Unification The sons of men are one, and I am one with them. I seek to love, not hate. I seek to serve and not exact due service. I seek to heal, not hurt. Let pain bring due reward of light and love. Let the soul control the outer form and life and all events and bring to light the love that underlies the happenings of the time. Let vision come and insight. Let the future stand revealed. Let inner union demonstrate and outer cleavages be gone. Let love prevail. Let all men love. Chapter 5 The Monad's Spiritual Triad The Monad Summary and the task ahead. The Spiritual Triad The Spiritual Triad, the reflection of the monad, as explained in my video Journey into Consciousness, the monad cannot descend below that of the monadic plane. Hence, it establishes outposts via permanent atoms on the three planes below. This creates the spiritual triad, also referred to as the spiritual soul. The spiritual triad is the custodian of monadic energy, atma, buddhi, and manas. It is the student on the path of discipleship who now has to bridge the gap between the triad's monastic permanent atom and his mental unit or mind. This stream of triple energy we also call the Antakarana. This triple link of force bypasses the soul, whereas the first link we strengthened and cleared earlier on connects our mental unit with the soul. For how to create this upper link, still called Antakarana, read The Rays and Initiations, page 485 to 495 by Alice A. Bailey. Also read the free article Extending the Channel to Higher Levels on my website, part number 6064. The fourth initiation marks the complete realization of this direct link to and relationship with the monad. An arhat manifests. This now enables the initiate to say, I and my father are one. The fifth initiation, the resurrection and ascension. A master with full monadic Logoic consciousness and no longer subject to reincarnation. The Monad Lift up thy head, O Lano. Dost thou see one or countless lights above thee, burning in the dark midnight sky? I sense one flame, O Guru Deva. I see countless undetached sparks shining in it. Secret Doctrine, Volume 1, page 145, H. P. Blavatsky. The monad is the highest divine spiritual life atom, a being, living and evolving on the monadic plane. We refer to it as the spark of and attached to the flame divine, the Logos. The monads are to the planetary Logos what the third eye is to man. 
It is the lens through which the light of the solar logos can flow to the planetary logos. Many, many eons have passed since the human monads started to function on Earth via their triads, tending to the evolution of the mineral, plant, and animal kingdoms via group souls. The purpose of the monad, whose goal is not the expansion of consciousness, but rather what such expansion will reveal. What the personality is to the soul, the soul is to the monad. It is the ensouling power in every particle of matter, in every plane below the monadic. It is this spiritual power that draws a person after physical death upwards into the soul. When our journey as the soul-enhanced personality has reached its apex at the fifth initiation, the same power draws us upwards in frequency into the monad, our Christ. This constitutes our first cosmic initiation. While the consciousness threat of the Antakarana originates in the soul and anchors itself in the area of the pineal gland, the life threat originates from the monad and connects to the sinus node of the heart. Spirit, in its turn, is enabled to enhance its vibration through the medium of its experience in matter. A treatise on the seven rays Page 522, Alice A. Bailey. On an even wider scale, it is a planetary Logos who ensouls the monads on his ray. At this point, and for this video, we have no need to explore this fantastic scheme of life any further. Just remember, everything lives and moves and has its being within a greater one. Summary I have attempted to describe in this video the making of the students consciously one with himself and those in incarnation with him, with his higher self, the soul, and hence with all souls, with his spirit, the monad, or father in heaven, and hence with all monads. The life and consciousness threats and any other projected link like Sutratma and Antakarana have no real existence in time and space. They are in reality a state of awareness, symbols to aid the student's visualization. They are in reality projected energy and force. Know then that all consciousness in this universe is one. Spirit is matter at its highest vibration, and matter is spirit at its lowest vibration. And consciousness was created at every point in between via the attraction and interaction of spirit with matter. And we are spirit, having a human experience. The task ahead. For you, my fellow student, the immediate tasks ahead are 1. Integration of the personality via methods that reduce glamour and illusion. 2. Expressing the soul's qualities and develop spiritual staying power. 3. Cleansing and strengthening the Antakarana from the personality to the soul and bringing about at one meant with the soul. 4. Extending the Antakarana from the mind to the spiritual triad via use of the soul's consciousness to ultimately bring about the complete fusion 
of the unified personality and soul with the unified spiritual triad and monad. A master no longer bound by the form side of life. The following affirmation was found on a handwritten piece of paper in 1972 on a Waikiki sidewalk, Honolulu, Hawaii. Self I at last have reached my goal and solved the mystery of my soul. I am that to which I prayed, that to which I looked for aid. I am that which I did seek. I am my own mountain peak. I upon creation look as a page from my own book. For the I, the one that many make of substance, which from me I take. For all is me, there is no two. Creation is myself all through. What I grant unto myself, I take down from my own shelf and give to me, the only one, for I am the Father and the Son. And where I want, I do see. My own wishes come forth in me, for I am the knower and the known, ruler, subject, and the throne. There is one is what I am, and hell itself is but a dam, which I did put in my own stream, when in a nightmare I did dream that I was not the only one, and thus by me was pain begun, which ran its course till I awoke, and found that I with me did joke. So now that I do stand awake, I my throne do wisely take, and rule my kingdom, which is me, a master through eternity. Anonymous All that I was able to do, to learn and experience as personality and soul, was a true group effort. My teachers, the great healing Davis, the unseen helpers, and all those who created the tools to allow me to bring this information to like-minded students everywhere. Thank you. May there be light in our minds and love in our hearts. And may our Christ descend to earth. Humbly, Dieter. From the unreal, lead me to the real. From darkness, lead me into light. From death, lead me to immortality.